so hi, my name is Jarrett. Um, my mentor is Miles Lubin and Theo Papamarco. Uh, he's unfortunately not able to be here for this conference. Um, but I'm going to be working on, it's not showing, but I'm going to be working on automatic differentiation in Julia. Um, there's currently a couple packages that use automatic differentiation. What it is is it's a uh, method to uh, essentially take uh, exact derivatives really quickly. Um, there are other methods, of course. Uh, one common one is the method of finite differencing, um, which uses the limit definition of, uh, of a derivative. Um, and essentially, that's really prone to approximation error. Um, and it's quite slow. Um, we can leverage these cool things called dual numbers um, to uh, take exact derivatives um, in a manner that's uh, much faster. So I guess I don't, don't have this up there yet, but if there's... Oh, oh, well, there we go. That makes my job easier, I guess. Um, so essentially, um, a dual number is kind of like a complex number, except instead of, instead of having an imaginary component, it has a, um, an infinitesimal component. Um, and so essentially, what you get is when you um, run this number through any generic function, um, the output uh, of that function um, ends up being the evaluation of that function at the real component and the evaluation of the derivative of that function at the real component uh, and that, and that uh, derivative evaluation is the epsilon component, um, which is the infinitesimal component. Um, so basically, um, there's already a type that exists uh, in Julia for using dual numbers. It's in the dual numbers package um, that has a single epsilon component. Um, still not up there. Um, but we can basically um, take gradients of functions faster if we use more than one epsilon component at a time. What, what you end up having is you have uh, multiple epsilon components. E oh, here we go. Cool. So I'm already down. So this part, if you can see it, is essentially what I was saying before. Um, the epsilon component on the right um, essentially gives you the uh, evaluation of the derivative of the function uh, at your real input. And so uh, we have this dual number type that currently exists, um, and we can use it to evaluate uh, gradients by just evaluating the directional derivatives one at a time. Um, and so this is kind of what that looks like. Uh, so that takes um, it, an evaluation of f the number of times equal to the length of the input vector. So that's obviously uh, kind of slow. Um, we can add more epsilon components to uh, basically essentially take more directional derivatives in a single pass uh, of x, of, 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 of f, in a single evaluation of f. Um, and so essentially there are a couple of different um, ways we can implement a type that has multiple uh, epsilon components. Um, and they're the two main competing implementations. This is just an example of, uh, of doing this evaluation. Um, the two competing uh, implementations are using tuples and vectors. So uh, with the latest tuple update, um, the tupocalypse, uh, it's <laughs> it, tuple members are stack allocated. Um, so that could potentially be great because you know things, things uh, operations using the members could speed up. Um, the implementation we currently have for 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 this relies a lot on generated functions, which is not as nice. It uh, ends up making it really hard to do things like use um, the SIMD macro um, to have more like parallelized operations on a processor level. Um, so there's another implementation that uses vectors. Um, and so vectors are nice because you won't run into possible stack overflow errors if you have lots of components, right? Um, and it also, um, we can take advantage of SIMD instructions um, and the fast math macro um, and other things. So, so basically, uh, I've, so what I've been working on are these implementations for, I started a little bit early. Um, I know the current project is supposed to start at June 15th. I started at the beginning of June. Um, but so essentially what I've done so far is uh, taken a couple of different test functions. So the Rosenbrock function is a common uh, optimization test function. There's also uh, the Ackley function, which normally returns a, uh, a vector, takes in a vector, returns a vector. But um, I modified it to return a scalar, simply summing the components. 
um, and then a really simple kind of uh, test function um, to, uh, to have just a really simple benchmark. Um, and so my results, if they can fit on the screen here, um, basically what you see for, um, uh, let's go to a more telling plot. This is probably the, the best one here. Um, so what you kind of see essentially is that uh, as we increase the, um, first of all, the green line is the, the, the simple dual number implementation that already exists for automatic differentiation. That can be found in Optum, um, the Optum package. Um, so using tuples, which is this blue line here, uh, we see that we get a significant speed. By the time we hit five epsilon components, that's about a four times speed up already um, on top of that. But if we go to a larger number of components, which, which is uh, pretty, um, so, something you, it's pretty desirable if you have a large input vector, because then you can, the, the more epsilon components you use, the fewer evaluations of F uh, have to be made to evaluate a gradient. Um, so, so as you go towards larger, um, larger input vectors, uh, it seems like using the vector implementation of the in dual numbers uh, is preferable. Um, so yeah, so essentially that's what I have. The work later in the summer um, will probably be to really nail down a solid implementation and kind of proliferate its use throughout the Julia ecosystem wherever automatic differentiation is needed. Yep, that's me. Ah, okay, so that's a good question. Um, so Julia's way of having, uh, of being able to overload functions um, in a manner that's really efficient um, based on the input type of the, based on the types of the arguments, um, basically allows us to overload elementary functions, which if we go back, if we go back to this, um, if we go back to this definition right here, uh, essentially because uh, the systems we want to implement are, are systems where you can take a native Julia function um, that you've just coded up randomly that takes in a vector and returns whatever. Um, you can take that function, pass it to this automatic differentiation tool, and it will take the gradient of it. To do that, we have to be able to go through each of the elementary functions that people use to compose other functions um, and overload their... Uh, their overload their operations using dual numbers and so such that uh, the dual number that gets returned, for example, if this was if this was sine, if G was sine here, we would just want to overload it so that um, you know it would it would return sine x plus uh, whatever that uh, whatever y is here uh, times uh, cosine uh, cosine x uh, times the epsilon component. So being able to evaluate. Um, just define a set of definitions essentially for all the elementary functions that is just as performant um, as a native implementation would be basically um, allows us to allows this to be a tenable idea essentially um, whereas like something in like Python you try to overload the sine function um, and it's 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 gonna be a sad time it's gonna be a sad time um, So, out of the box, I'm going to say we don't have that implemented, but what you could do is you could overload your own function with the dual number type that we basically provide. Um, and if you, if, you define, if you define that, then like it will basically pass through the calculation and, and work correctly. But it, does, that, does that mean my implementation would have to be able to handle you, it? Yeah, yeah. You would have to, you'd basically have to define the behavior of whatever other function you're using on dual numbers yourself, which is not like the best thing, but there might be some way to do like code introspection or something later to make it easier to do that, but it will probably always be a thing. If you're not writing in native Julia code, um, then it might always be a, more of a hassle. Right. 
Yeah. Um, that kind of thing. Okay. I mean, yeah, that makes sense. Um, you, it is all automatic differentiation. Differenti it might be worth it just because it, automatic differentiation is, is also faster than using a lot of the methods that give you approximate der derivatives. So, um, but I guess it depends on how much implement it's an work exact yourself. Yeah. Model. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there you go. Um, cool. Any other questions? Um, you need to evaluate a directional derivative. So, I mean, essentially the gradient here is um, just a series of uh, directional derivatives that you're taking with the function. So, uh, generally, if you're using a single epsilon component, you need to I mean, you need to take as many uh, directional derivatives as the length of the input vector that you have that you're giving to the function. Yeah. You might need a hundred thousand derivatives. Right. In real large yeah. It, it, right. And so, uh, and so, if you, if you, what I was. At, at, at every step of the, of the, of the, of the, of the Right. Um, hundred thousand first derivatives. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There you go. If you want to do further, you have to go through it again, go through the pain again. Um, but, but yeah. So being able to cut down on the number of evaluations of f that have to occur to take those derivatives is like a really important thing to do. Essentially, because we don't, because that's that's where a lot of the slowness comes from. It's the bulk of the time spent. Um, all right. Question about, I think oh. one last question. Oh. Yeah. So just real quick, um, is there any thought? Because when you have these multiple lines, you can have new, you know, not just first derivatives, you can do second derivatives. Is that in the plan zone or not? Uh, there is a package that exists called hyperdual numbers, .jl that. Um, basically implements um, a dual, that has a dual number implementation that is specifically useful for taking second derivatives. Um, I don't really know much about it. Uh, you could just evaluate the gradient and then evaluate the gradient again if you wanted to take the the second derivative of of f in this in this case. But it might be it might be faster to rely on basically a different uh, mathematical model to to do so. I, I'm I'm not sure yet. That's something to look at. Anything else? Thanks. Okay. Thank you.